don't have my card, so I'll go five minutes. I don't have my card. Hello and welcome to another episode of Your Right to Know, brought to you by the Fitchburg Republican City Committee. Tonight, I will be your co-host, and we have a very special co-host uh, here uh, this evening, uh, Sue Smiley of the Worcester Middlesex GOP Committee Woman. Thank you for joining us today, Sue. Yes, to and we have a couple of very, uh, very young guests, and this show is going to be meeting some young Republicans, young conservatives with political convictions. And with us is Abby Pickett, uh, Michael Clark, and Kyle Shelton. How you doing, guys? Good. Yeah. Doing all right. And let's just take a quick minute uh, and tell the audience about yourself and how you became interested in the Republican Party or the conservative movement. Abby, why don't you go first? Um, I'm Abby, I'm 17 and I go to Wachusett Regional High School and I became interested in politics when I um, stopped playing sports and I'd always had a knack for it but I wasn't too um, educated and I really wanted to become educated because it's something that goes on all the time and it'll never go away and so that's when I really started getting into politics and reading things from both sides and that's how I just started to develop my opinions. And Mike, what are you? Yeah, I'm Mike, 19 years old, uh, born and raised in Lunenburg, go to Lunenburg Middle High School. I think my political interest kind of started around maybe my sophomore year. I took a bioethics class, and I think the teacher there really helped me kind of like expand my kind of interest and also kind of my uh, worldview that really pushed me into politics. Hmm. My name is Kyle Shelton. I'm 23 years old. I live in uh, the town of Sterling. Um, I first got involved in politics a few years ago when um, uh, some significant events happened in the state around firearms legislation and stuff like that. That's an issue that I've always been pretty, um, ab uh, have some pretty strong feelings about and um, it kind of launched me into the political realm. I started educating myself about the state's laws and then that kind of blossomed into having a, a more comprehensive um, conservative view of uh, different laws. and. Um, politics in general. So. Excellent, excellent. So all three of you, you guys are courageous for expressing your, your independent spirits and willingness to think for yourself versus the group think mm -hmm. of, you know, the, of what unfortunately today's generation has been becoming. Um, being openly Republican, conservative, have you found it to be your um, conservative values to be so open, are they overtly hostile? Do you get any kind of feedback from any of your classmates or any of your peers? For sure. Definitely a lot of teachers. Obviously, we live in Massachusetts, so it tends to lean more liberal. But I've had a few teachers along the way that have helped um, nourish, I guess, my um, conservative beliefs and thought it was a good thing that I expressed my opinion and didn't think like everyone else. But I've definitely had teachers grade me down or not bash me on my ideas, but definitely challenge it. And it's more like, like you said, the group think. It's the whole class kind of agreeing with the teacher because that's what they say is right. Now, just to expand on that, the teachers actually decreased your grade because of I, I'm pretty I'm pretty sure. It, it, my classmates and I are all like the same level and stuff like that. And I feel like um, teachers who don't agree tend to kind of just think not lesser of you, but are not as interested to hear what you have to say because they already have their ideas. And do you have any specific you know, instances? Um, not naming names. Of yeah, course, no. History class, U.S. history, sophomore year. 
Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we had to write papers on presidents or whatever. I think specifically it was Andrew Jackson, if we thought he was a hero or a villain, and I said he was a hero, and just about everyone else in my class said he was a villain. And my teacher asked me why, I gave my answer, and that was it, but it definitely was interesting to hmm. see my points go down a bit for that. Okay. All right. Guys, what about, what about uh, either of you? Do you find your beliefs to be, have some people openly hostile towards you? Um, not so much as in Lunenburg, because Lunenburg is a bit more rural, so there's a lot more of like a kind of divide or split between the kind of parties there. It's more like a 50-50, but I do find, especially when I was much more outspoken, um, especially when I ran for class president, that I did get a bit of backlash from like the other you know, side of the class, the kind of talking behind the back and all that. Nothing was direct, but I heard from friends of friends of what <laughs> other people were saying. And I kind of just brushed it off because, you know, those kind of people's opinions, if they're not willing to say it to me and to my face, then it really doesn't matter. Good for you. Yeah. Good for you. That's true. Mm. Kyle, what about you? Well, I'm fortunate enough to live in a, a small town uh, like Mike, and uh, a majority of the people in Sterling are, at least uh, a, as far as I know, uh, Republican, conservative, we're a farming community and stuff. I'm, we're very proud of that and um, I have an easy time surrounding myself with more people that are ideologically similar to me. Um, that's actually been something that I've been fortunate uh, to been able to do for the majority of my um, my educational career and uh, even in my work environment. Mm -hmm. So um, there have been uh, times when I've been politically challenged, um, but Usually, as long as I stay off social media, that won't happen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what about what? Well, you you started talking about your education. Mm -hmm. Did you find in college that you would get some sort of backlash? Um, I I thought I would, um, and uh, fortunately, I wasn't so much affected by that. I kind of uh, just stuck to myself and um, was able to kind of maintain a group of friends that were politically similar to me, um, much like I'm able to do in Sterling, and so um, it wasn't really an issue for me, but it it can be for a lot of other people, a lot of other young people, and that's really a shame. Um, like Abby has said, uh, sometimes teachers will dock grades for stuff, um, for not really being a part of the group think, and that's something we need to be aware of mm -hmm. and continually fighting against. And I think it's the same for both sides. So Now, what what formed your conservative ideologies, just as a general question? Oh, well, for me, it was, well, this was freshman year in 2016, the elections, um, when President Trump won, a lot of people were very upset by it, and I really didn't understand why, so that's when I really did some research, and I, first, I'm going to be openly admit it, I was like, yeah, Hillary Clinton, let's go, because she's a woman, and then my dad sat me down and was like, why? Like, why do you feel like that? And I couldn't explain to him why, because I didn't know why, and I, I just went with everyone else. And that's when I really got opened up to thinking kind of outside the box and doing my own research and making sure I'm getting everything correct. So when I speak on something, I know what I'm talking about. And I just tend to agree with more of the conservative beliefs, I feel like. Definitely maybe some like liberal ethics like I do feel compassion for people I'm not like a harsh you know whatever but I definitely think conservative um, ideologies are more my style and what about you Mike uh, again for me really it was that kind of the, the one class that I took in sophomore year mm -hmm. with my bioethics teacher like I love him so much for you know just how much he kind of pushed me as a as an individual to kind of you know open my kind of thinking because I think Younger in my younger days, I was kind of more into that kind of group thing, kind of you know, you kind of bubble that I didn't want to leave, and he kind of brought me out of that. And I think that's where I kind of started to expand my horizon, to look into things. So, okay. well, like I said, um, I r originally got involved in politics because of um, I had said firearms legislation, but it really wasn't legislation uh, in 2016. As many of us remember, uh, Attorney General Maura Healey decided to uh, put forth her um, uh, uh, enforcement notice on uh, so-called... The unconstitutional uh, enforcement notice, let's, let's add to that. <laughs> <laughs> on so-called uh, assault weapons. And um, at that point, I was about a year away from getting my license to carry. And all my life since I was 18, um, I actually got my 
uh, FID card when I was 18, and all my even though I could have gotten it at 16, mm -hmm. but um, all my life I had kind of uh, been passionate about firearms and um, uh, you know their proper use, their history, and things like that. And so there was a few um, firearms that I had on my. Uh, to get on this. your bucket list, yeah, on yeah. my bucket list, yeah, and um, unfortunately, those actually went out the window in 2016. Um, so uh, it made me upset. But instead of saying, you know what, this is too big for me to take on, uh, I'll just, you know, ignore it or move out of state or ignore it, which would be even worse. Mm -hmm. I decided to do something about it. I educated myself. I decided to start testifying before uh, the different committees at the State House on f upcoming firearms legislation. Um, I joined the National Rifle Association. Um, I'm almost, uh, almost there uh, paying off my lifetime membership. So. <laughs> <laughs> I also joined the Gun Owners Action League and um, it, really, it really spurred my entry into the political realm and I became uh, I went from a one issue um, you know political advocate to uh, um, an educated multi issue Excellent. platform so Excellent. you know it 's funny I, I, it actually segues that segues perfect into one of the questions I wanted to ask and that you know you you decided to not be defeated to not get discouraged, and I think that 's what i 'm hearing from all of you. How do you encourage other peers? You know, or, or your other friends that might differ from you, or friends, family. Um, how do you, how do you encourage them to stay involved, to fight the fight, to um, represent the principles that you guys believe in? Do you, do you think that um, young people as your age, uh, you know, feel that courage to press on, or do you think there's a lot of intimidation going on? Like I'm, I'm, I'm thinking. Kudos, Kyle, you really embraced it, but what do you guys think? I mean, have you, you had one teacher that was very influential. Have you been able to influence others? You know, I mean, that's kind of what I'm, I'm, I'm wondering about. I mean, I'd like to say I have. I like to talk about it openly, and social media definitely plays a big part in it, and I'm not afraid to input my comments or concerns because it's a lot of uh, headliners that'll say one thing but you don't actually read it or understand what it's about and people republish it or post it and not really know what it's about and you have to get educated on it and I'll post something or explain what it is and then people are like oh really is that what it's about or this or that and it's really really important to make sure you get all the details before you speak on something yeah you're right yeah. And unfortunately, on social media, a lot of people oh, I will know. speak and have no idea what they're talking Spe about. Specifically on abortion, when that was going on, like a big thing, like last month or two months ago, the whole school was talking about it for weeks on end, but they didn't really know what they were talking about. They just were talking about what they saw, I mm -hmm. guess. They didn't really inform themselves on the situation. Yeah, Mike, I, I think you're... you're heavily involved in the scouts, right? Yeah. So, I mean, I, I wonder how you feel you see other people in your peer group there. Is there? There is a bit more difficult because I kind of started to distance myself from scouts once I got my eagle, what's about a year ago. Mm. I think for a lot of people though, like kind of saying opinions that are kind of unpopular, even if you truly believe in them, a lot of people are kind of scared of like the real life repercussions, you know, job opportunities lost stuff and beyond that wow. a lot of you know repercussions so a lot of people aren't you know totally encouraged to say th what they think um, I think for a lot of people that's one of the main concerns is just the actual repercussions that they can get from saying that so yeah and I would think that would hit weigh heavily on you as you're all thinking about what college to go to you know do I choose a campus where I feel I'm going to really excel and be a free individual or am I going to be um, censored and constrained. So uh, yeah, um, Kyle, any thoughts there? I mean, you're a little, little older, but um, have you run into that in your peer groups? Uh, I have run into it um, and I think it's important to remember for young people to remember that no matter what, and I mean obviously there's a, a time and a place and so it's appropriate to kind of weigh your comments and to um, point. to the appropriate audience point. And, and everything but uh, there's also like it happened for me there's going to come a time in your life where you're going to have to make a decision either to stand up for what you believe in and advocate for what you believe in or to kind of sit back and watch things happen we are going to as young people 
inherit this country. <laughs> and if we don't stand up for what we believe in now, then we're not going to be able to later on. Mm -hmm. And that's something that we've got to always keep in mind. Good point. Good sure. message. Absolutely. Now, Abby, very quickly, you're, you're a conservative in high school. Yeah. Okay. And from your previous statements and your stories about how you switched, you know, it was freshman year? Yeah. So, did you lose friends uh, because of that switch? Well, it wasn't up until this year, junior year, that I actually, not maybe lost friends, but had a lot of disagreements with people. Um, my friend, Zan, who's not here tonight, she and I and another girl, actually it was three of us, kind of started a group called the Young Republicans at my school. And there was a total of six of us with the 2,500 kids at Wachusett. And, um, we have, I, I mean, I mentioned this before, we put posters up and stuff and they all got ripped down. And when we became really public about our group, we made an Instagram page, we posted stuff, very respectful manners, by the way. And um, then people have definitely said some stuff and called us racist or fascist for no reason. And that stuff does get to you after a bit, but you can't really show it that it gets to you. But yeah, you can't I've let it get to you. Yeah, but I definitely have gotten... Um, comments made not necessarily directly like you but like heard around the school before so yeah, yeah. so Kyle you're you're a college graduate Mike you're preparing to enter college is that correct yeah and where where are you preparing to go to school uh, UMass Lowell okay and I know you kind of touched on this Kyle you know as a college graduate but what was your experience like you said that you you surrounded yourself with like-minded people uh, but how did that impact your, your college experience? Well, uh, I think it kind of helped to reinforce the political ideology that I already had and um, helped me develop more opinions. Even though I did surround myself with people that were like-minded, I also tried to engage other people in, um, that had differing viewpoints. And uh, if you're able to see the other person's point of view, or at least to be able to hear it, even if you disagree with it, you can form a better opinion of yourself, uh, or not of yourself, but uh, of your ideas, and uh, to be able to combat uh, the things that you wouldn't necessarily agree with. Um, so it just goes back into educating yourself, and sometimes that's done through engaging differing ideologies. Now, in your classes, did this ever become a problem? Um, fortunately, no, it okay. didn't, um, but a lot of people can't say the same. Okay. Now, Mike, getting back to you, what do you expect your experience to be like? Uh, you said UMass, correct? Oh, uh, yeah, UMass Law. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I've kind of already like, looked into you know, uh, some of the clubs that they have there, and they do have a Republicans club, so I'm obviously going to join that one once I actually get into the school, just, you know, set myself up there. Um, but I, I haven't gone to some of the introduction um, kind of ceremonies and stuff, orientation being one of them, but I have friends who are going to ULO that have already gone to that stuff and stories I've heard, it's probably going to be a lot more kind of constrained on what you can and cannot say in the kind of the public realm at the school. Mm -hmm. They seem very bent on, you know, no, no, like to unpopular opinions. So no so. Trump hats is what you're saying. <laughs> probably, <laughs> no, okay. Okay. just because right. it may make a few people or a lot of people mad. Okay. So, um, You guys here the hot button issues. Abby, you mentioned abortion. Yep. Kyle, we know you're a big, big proponent for the uh, Second Amendment. Um, we talk about immigration, term limits. Um, what do you think the big hot button issues are of, of your generation? Um, the Democrats look at issues such as impeachment and corruption as major issues, um, you know, providing for the um, folks coming in across the border. And I think we were supposed to count how many times children were referenced in the debates last night. Mm -hmm. So um, I'd like to ask you guys, you know, what are your issues and what do you think is important? Uh, I'm sure you're happy to see jobs and the economy happy, but I, I, Kyle, I know you're... What do you think? What do you think people well, want to... I just want to say it's really sad that these people care more about people who aren't citizens here and their well-being rather than the citizens here and their well-being, but hot-button issues, definitely abortion's a big one for my generation, all the, at least the feminist labeled girls at my school. Um, immigration definitely is a big one. Um, 
That's well, um, a Second Amendment for sure. They definitely don't like guns, and you could sit there and argue back and forth all day, but you can't really change their mind about it unless they're <laughs> educated. But those are definitely some big ones. I think that. Oh, mm -hmm. and climate change too. Climate change too. That's a big one. Everyone's like, save the earth, but they continue but, doing what. But they're what doing. do you think? What like what do you talk about in your Republican club? Like what what are those hot buttons? Usually, uh, current events that kind of go on within that week, kind of. Uh, issues that happen. We talked about illegal immigration a lot and as a group for our school newspaper we wrote a counterpoint to why we believe that building the wall is a great thing to do for the country. Mike. For me I think probably secondary would be the Second Amendment. I think that's going to be a large kind of debate over the next couple of decades but I think like more so of a pressing issue for the century would probably be First Amendment rights and kind of how that's being challenged because I think in many places around the world you don't truly have some kind of freedom to say what you want or to believe what you want especially in places like UK which you're not exactly reserved to those kind of rights to say what you want especially when uh, people are being you know charged in courts for posting videos on YouTube um, I think that especially since it's starting to creep into places closer to the border Canada um, bring through the new law to basically force or compel you to say what people want you to you to call them. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's a bit silly, um, especially even in places close to here in, in the country. Um, the the baker case was being forced to bake the cake, you know, for the gay couple. Mm -hmm. I think that really via that, that's starting to creep in the territory of what what rights do you have to protect your own religious beliefs, and do, do, you know. Does the government have the right to force you to serve somebody business? A lot of this comes down to, I think, First Amendment issues are going to be probably the biggest deal for the next few decades, if not the century. Yeah. And Kyle, what do you, what do you think? What do you see around your, your group? What do you think they're concerned about? Well, I was actually just having a conversation with a coworker today about um, how really what we're experiencing in America I, I believe everything stems from this one issue, and it's the degradation, of, uh, it's the, um, the breaking down of society. And uh, unfortunately, um, at least in this country, uh, you know, maybe 20, 30 years ago, things weren't the same, but there were certain values that people held, like um, family values. Sanctity of life. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and mm -hmm. um, kind of the holding together of uh, th this, um, I say family values, but it's it's more than just the family and everything. But now we see um, rampant uh, uh, divorce rates and stuff like that, and that goes into the problem. Um, we see uh, kind of the glorification of violence in the media, in video games and stuff. These aren't really things that we can necessarily legislate, but we've seen some of a breakdown of the value system in America, and uh, I think, I really strongly believe that that's actually contributing to the... Um, to almost a society of violence, uh, to the mass shootings that we've been seeing, to an inability to address the uh, mental health issues that are popping up, and they're not even popping up, they've they been persisting exist. and they've been getting worse. They've been around so, for a long time. Exactly. Yeah. And um, I think what we need to do in America is we really need to come back together, uh, start being responsible for the mistakes that we've made, and kind of uh, get back to a, a good place. And, um, and it would, <laughs> talking about specifics, it would, it, would, uh, it would take a long time for me to be yes. able to explain Fair all enough. this. <laughs> <laughs> now, because of your, your young age, uh, you're just entering into your interest in, in politics. Um, you're grow growing up in a time when you see the nation is severely polarized. Mm -hmm. uh, you have the right, uh, left versus right, conservative versus liberal, capitalism versus socialism. Um, Democrat versus Republican, the business of government is not getting it done. Okay, let's face it. <laughs> and as you enter into your years of political interest, how do you, th how would you suggest that we break this logjam of polarization in this country? Wow, that was a loaded question. I think just to educate people, really, um, I think that'll help. That would help a lot of issues. I feel like a lot of um, the polarization comes from influence from celebrities or even your own family, and I think. Being able to think for your own and being able to say what you want, I think that would help a lot because that, I feel like that's what helped me. So maybe it'll help someone else. Mike, what do you think? Um, finding middle ground. I think that 
it, there should try to be like for people to try and put themselves to kind of work towards de-escalation of kind of the differences between people, especially political. I think that there needs to be some kind of common ground that's found between the parties that's agreeable and which is becoming a lot more scarce when you can't even get budget passed yeah. for parts right. of the bureaucracy in the government. Um, even when that kind of is becoming political, there's a lot of, I, I think it comes down just the escalation of kind of dividing rhetoric especially when you have news media kind of putting a you know black and white spin on everything I think there needs to be a toning down of both sides for everybody to just kind of try to work together mm. I wonder I mean we we, uh, we seemingly could all agree that President Trump's executive order to mandate hospitals to mandate their service costs seems like a, a no-brainer mm. of of everybody could get behind that, right? Because we all want to know what we're going to pay for our oil change, or we're all, we all want to know what that cost of gas is going to be but per gallon. Unfortunately for the left, because President Trump it's backs bad. it, yeah. it's automatically uh, it's a bad thing. It's, it's, it's a bad thing, even <laughs> though it, it benefits yeah. everybody. What do you think, Kyle? Uh, <laughs> I think that uh, I think that it's very important for us to be able to come to the table and that's something that um, we kind of see a lack of right now in American politics, I'd say on both sides. We need to be able to be able to sit, uh, sit down, come to the table, and discuss how exactly we feel about certain issues while also maintaining the strong stance uh, on our value system. I was actually talking to some friends really, uh, recently and they brought up a really good point. It's um, if you can't, uh, well, it's not if you can't, first, is you need to see if you can cooperate. If you can't cooperate, then you need to compromise to a point. And if you can't even compromise on an issue, then you need to compete with your idea system. And that's kind of what we're seeing right now, mm -hmm. but in the extreme. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now real quick, we're running really low on time. Mm -hmm. Should we lower the voting age to 16, like some liberal politicians want to do? Go ahead. No, 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 no. Okay. I don't, I, Quickly, I, why? Because I don't think you're mature enough to be able to predict into the future how it'll affect you. Like, I don't think you should, especially because kids have wildly changed. I've seen lots of my peers wildly change their opinions over the course of two years from 16 to 18. That's an extreme de developmental like point in somebody's life in a short amount of time, and I don't think that they should be allowed to vote at that age. I don't agree with it either. I'd say that um, there's a little bit of hypocrisy on this one issue. If we don't think that somebody's old enough to join the military until they're 18, and that they're not mature enough um, to drink until they're 21, uh, if they're not mature enough to smoke until they're 21, to make that decision that they want to do that to their body, then I don't really think it's justifiable to say at 16 you're old enough to be making decisions that not only affect you and your government, but the government of everybody in America. Mm -hmm. Good answers, guys. <laughs> All right. Thank you for joining us this evening. We want to thank you for watching Your Right to Know and sitting in with the FRCC. As we leave you, uh, we want you to remember that your local city, town, Republican committee is the only grassroots organization that supports and holds dear your liberty, your constitutional rights, and conservative values. We encourage you, we encourage you to join us. Why? Because for us, GOP stands for growth, opportunity, and prosperity, and because we always stand for freedom. Thank you, and have a good evening. America, we stand for freedom. So let us all unite to yearn and strive for Reflects our values that preserves our rights and goes forth in power and might. That reflects our values and preserves our rights and goes forth in power and might.